Kiraku has a history of more than 400 years and uh, the first Rakugo stories are uh, created by the uh, Buddhist monks to use them in their sermons. Every Rakugo storyteller who's ever become a storyteller in the last 400 years has done this apprenticeship. It's three to four years usually, uh, no days off. Uh, there are certain rules, no drinking, no smoking, no going on dates, uh, depending on your master. You go to your master's house every day, you clean his house, do his laundry, carry his bags, fold his kimonos. Uh, basically you have to be very serious, you're not allowed to laugh, not allowed to smile usually. <laughs> you have to be very attentive to your master. Don't speak until your master speaks to you. Uh, basically subsume. Uh, to your master, uh, every aspect of your individuality as a, as a human being. Uh, and basically anybody that does something like this for three years is going to end up a funny person <laughs> in the end. Well, I was born uh, 43 years ago in Toronto to parents of Slovenian origin uh, and I was very heavily involved when I was in Toronto in musical theatre. I did uh, adaptations of Aristophanes comedies, 2,500 year old Greek comedies, turned them into musicals and my musical Clouds ran at the Paradox Theatre in Toronto for 14 months and toured Canada and I was really into the Aristophanes and I read an article one day by a scholar of ancient theatre saying that the Aristophanes, 2,500 year old Greek theatre bore many similarities to Japanese no and kabuki theatre. And so this kind of got me interested in Japan and so when I was 29, on just a whim, because I had a little bit of time, I thought, oh maybe I'll go to Japan for six months on a working holiday visa and study a little bit of kabuki and then come home and keep writing. But then the second I got to Japan, I kind of fell in, I fell in love with Japan and uh, and now 14 years later <laughs> look at me <laughs> so watch what you do on a whim <laughs> I really I, well, I I lived for the first eight years I lived in Yokohama and then I moved to Osaka which is the seat of Japanese comedy and I went there to study Japanese uh, rakugo storytelling the kind of storytelling I do and uh, now I live in a in a, a very small town called Ise. So I've moved around, and they're all, they're all great. Usually, a Rakugo storyteller would live in one of the big cities. That's a natural thing to think. But uh, there's, a, there's a project that I'm involved in with the, with the Yoshimoto Entertainment Company in Japan, who's celebrated. This is an entertainment company that's celebrating its 100th year anniversary, uh, which is incredible. They've, they started a program called uh, A Comedian is Coming to Live in Your Town. Anata no machi ni sumimasu genin. And for that, I got sent to Mie Prefecture uh, to Ise. Uh, so it's great. I have, a, I have my own little house in Ise, which has a little theater, seats 35 people. And I do Rakugo storytelling, I do comic storytelling there every week. One of the things about uh, Japanese, when I went to Japan 13 years ago, I was starting from zero. Uh, zero kara, as they say in Japan. I started from zero. I knew no Japanese. I thought I knew no Japanese. But actually, Japanese has some very convenient things. And uh, you saw it a little bit in the who's on first. Uh, if you pronounce English in a certain way, it makes sense in Japanese. And this is great, because I thought I didn't know any Japanese. And then I went over to Japan, and I went into a restaurant, and I wanted to drink a beer. And I just said it in a Japanese way, the katakana way. I said, be do and don't. The waitress brings me a beer. Well, the wall. I can speak a little bit of Japanese. I didn't even study that. <laughs> Next day I want to drink some wine, and I say, Wai, mm, and don. Here comes a bottle of red wine. And you know, there's the traditional word for wine, the old-fashioned word in, uh, for wine, which means budoshu, which literally means red sake. But if you said that in a restaurant today, people would look at you funny. Wine is the right word. And this is great. There's actually a lot of words like this where if you just use it in the Katakana way, you can even speak Japanese. Even you can speak Japanese. I feel like I'm advertising something. You know, I went into Baker Bakery and I wanted some chocolate, uh, banana chocolate chip cake, uh, cake, and I just tried it. I said, uh, banana chocolate chip cake. <laughs>
make sense, and there's times when it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And you have to find the words that make sense in Japanese and the words that don't make sense, otherwise I'll run you into trouble. Uh, the other week, I ran out of soap in my washroom. Uh, my bathroom, I ran out of soap, and I didn't know the Japanese word for soap. Uh, so I went uh, to my uh, electronic dictionary, pico, 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 and I typed in soap, and it came out, the Japanese word for soap, seke. And uh, these are Japanese kanji, but the kanji for second are really hard. Uh, you could spend, I could spend three weeks, I would not learn how to write this word. But anyway, I learned how to pronounce it second, second, second. Okay, and then I went to uh, the local convenience store, or in Japanese, convenience store. <laughs> shortened usually to konbini. And this particular green store was, is called Sakuru K, or Circle K is the place I went to. And I, I went to the, uh, the young guy who was working there, and uh, I asked him, I was asking for the soap, and I said, uh, excuse me, can I please have some second? We're speaking in Japanese, but I'll do it in English for here, right? I said, can I please have some second? And he says, uh, sir, uh, what did you say? Uh, say uh, could you say that one more time? I said, second, second, I would like some second. You have some second, you know what second is, right? Second, second. Uh, sure. uh, I, I'm just gonna have to check if we have that or not. Um, I, I'll double check for that, but uh, could you please uh, just uh, repeat that one more time? I said, second, 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 second. Uh, perhaps that is an item which they only sell in America? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll just have to check it for you. Could you tell me one more time? I said, second, second. He wouldn't understand what I was saying. And I realized what my problem was after. And is, there's this thing in Japanese called the chisai tsu, which is a small tsu. It's one of the letters of their syllabary. It's a small tsu. Now you have a big tsu. It's shaped a little bit like that. It's a big tsu, and this is a very easy letter. It makes a sound. The sound is tsu. This is easy to remember. But the small tsu does not make a sound. It only tells you to wait before you proceed to the next syllable. This is very important. So I, it, I was saying second, but it really should have been sec -ken. If I said it that way, I'm sure he would have understood. But you say second, he has no idea what I'm talking about. Second, 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 second. Can you please calm down just a little bit for me? Uh, I'm going to do my best. Uh, just could you pronounce it one more time? Second, second, look. When I wash my hair, I use shampoo, right? Huh. I want the shampoo, I want the hand version. I want to wash my hands. Ah, sir, if you would like to wash your hands, then if you go to the back of this room, there is a door. If you go into the next room, there will be a little bit of a sink. I said, no, that's the toilet. I don't want to wash my hands. Now I want to buy a product. Oh, forget it, I gave up. I went to look for this myself. I found it. But I want to know. I need to live in this country, in this society. I need to be able to communicate. So I want to know the proper pronunciation, proper pronunciation for this item. So I went back to the same guy and said, this, ah, this is what I wanted. This is what I was looking for. Please tell me the proper Japanese pronunciation for this item. And he said, oh, sir, the proper Japanese pronunciation for that item is Hando Soku. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me English. <laughs>